Howdy folks, Riff Chair here. Have you ever seen a rifle being sold on the market or over the interweb where somebody has taken a classic military surplus firearm and spray painted the wood and tried to sell it? Or somebody's, uh, or somebody's taken some barathene and, or some shellac and coated up their, their Lee Enfield or their K98 they don't even take the wood off, they just black over the metal, the metal and the wood and... <laughs> <clears throat> or maybe somebody that has excessively sanded one of their military surplus firearms to make, to make it look more appealing. Um, I've heard of people taking angle grinders to the wood just because the, uh, you know, the dirt and the dents and stuff that are in the wood, they want to polish that out so it'll just have this big cloud of sawdust hanging over the guy working on his military surplus dock. Um, since the dawn of time, people have been doing things to their military surplus firearms rather than trying to keep them original, trying to keep them true to how they are supposed to be maintained. Um, and in the process, I mean, if they're not doing it properly, then they're totally devaluing their rifle <laughs> and uh, so this video is going to be kind of pointed towards one of the ways you can actually maintain oil and so on your military surplus stock on your firearm without losing out on its collectability you're going to maintain it take care of it and it's going to be true to form historically it is a correct way of maintaining the wood on your rifle if you want to find out more about that, stay tuned. This here is a uh, Long Branch uh, manufactured, a Long Branch number 4 Mark 1 Star manufactured in 1950. Uh, it is a Canadian Lee Enfield and it is stocked in black walnut. Um, pretty much all of the uh, Long Branches that I've, most of them that I've seen were black walnut. Some of them were, was wearing uh, Canadian maple which are beautiful rifles, by the way. So many of them have beautiful flame in the wood. A lot of that maple wood stocked um, long branches. And there are also uh, birch stock long branches. The, those were generally uh, stocks that came over from the United States from Savage to long branch and assembled into rifles here in Canada. So a Canadian landfill is going to be either black walnut, maple, or birch. And uh, Quite often you see some of the stocks on these rifles are just a beautiful deep black walnut. I mean, you, looking at this rifle here, you can tell this is a, it's a beautiful wood stock to look at. So you want to try to maintain it as best you can. Now this, this stock has gone through pretty much all of the different trials and tribulations of being out in the bush uh, and really arduous, um, difficult environmentals, rain, sleet, being this rifle's been frozen many times and, and they just keep on kicking one of the most reliable rifles still available in the world in my opinion. Um, however, this rifle is not really taking a shit kicking because I take care of my, my rifles, but it has been a uh, labor of love to maintain the luster of this stock. Um, it's not something you just do and feel like, it's something you need to be on top of. If you're out in the rain, you're out in the snow with these rifles um, and you're getting the, the stocks wet, they will swell, you know, that's how you get cracks because wood is an organic um, product and so moisture will swell or, or, you know, shrink wood if it dries out. So you got to oil it, you got to maintain it and you have to be militant about it. So essentially what I do is for all of these, all of these rifles, especially the Lee Enfields and, 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 uh, and the older Mausers, is that I'll use boiled linseed oil on, on the wood. I'll use boiled linseed oil, okay? I'm not using spray paint, I'm not using uh, uh, tongue oil, for example, Minwax makes a bunch of products. Here's a tongue oil. You can use this on your, on your hunting rifles, it's an absolutely incredible waterproofer but it is the wrong product for, for your military surplus rifles. They weren't using tongue oil, they are using linseed oil. Boiled linseed oil. What lots of folks will do when they initially get these, these rifles is they will want to clean the stocks before they start to apply an oil finish. 
I've seen lots of people just giving it a good uh, degrease with, with acetone. I used to be kind of all along those kind of uh, uh, thought processes myself. However, I no longer use any kind of a, uh, a, a degreasing agent on, on the wood stocks because um, you're, you're removing layers of oil that you're going to need to re replenish and replace anyways. What also a lot of people will do is they will wash the stocks in really, really hot soapy water. Now, there's also a way of um, um, restoring your rifle by, dis by being very destructive. Washing a stock in, um, in really, really hot water and scrubbing it with loofah pads and, and, and stuff like that is extremely destructive, especially when it comes to trying to preserve any of the, um, any of the stamps that are in the wood, or any of the numbers that are stamped into the wood. If you, if you really are a military surplus collector and you want to try to, re, to uh, maintain the rifle in, in as, as original configuration as possible, you don't want to be destructive to the wood on your rifle. So here, here we have Irene, the SMLE. You've been seeing a few videos of this rifle um, coming up uh, recently. And, and I've initially just started the, the restoration process with the stock on this rifle. Uh, when it came to me, it had been sitting in crates for 50, 60, maybe more years and in a relatively dry environment and the wood has shrunk. Any moisture and oil that was in the, um, in the stock, a lot of it had uh, evaporated and so I have been going through a process of trying to um, re-oil the stock and bring it back, you know, the stock will swell up into a certain point and then it will stabilize. Trying to actually stabilize the wood on this stock and it has swelled uh, a fair amount and a lot of the dents that are in the wood have lifted considerably. There are other ways of lifting a dent. A lot of people will use a steam iron. You get a wet cloth. You put the wet cloth over the, uh, the area that you want to try to lift. You apply the, uh, the steam iron and, and you kind of impregnate steam into the wood. That's a good way of doing it. Um, however, um, the way I'm starting to evolve and the way I'm starting to to look at these rifles is that every dent is probably a story. You're not going to be able to um, uh, restore a, uh, a dented stock to its former glory. Those dents are there to stay and unless you actually replace the stock because it bothers you so much. It is part of the story of these rifles. Every scratch, every dent. And we should try to get ourselves out of the mindset of trying to re remove those conceivably those imperfections, it is part of the collectability now of the rifle. It's part of the rifle story. But there are certain things that we can do um, just simply to weatherproof it, take care of it, and maintain it. Uh, those are through boiled linseed oil treatment. So I've got a couple different um, examples here of some of the products that I use in these rifles. First of all, this one here, which is pure linseed oil. I will use, uh, you can get these at your arts and craft stores. It's uh, most often in the oil paint section. This is pure linseed oil and I'm using this as basically just a, a, a basis of rehydrating the wood, um, allowing it to come back to its kind of former shape, um, restoring itself, it swells up. This is a good product for that. You can also get um, pure boiled linseed oil. Sometimes you can see it if you do. And there are some craft stores I recommend you buy it. Most of the stuff that you'll see at your hardware store has dryers in it, which are additives and chemicals that they add to the boiled linseed oil to make it cure faster. You may not get the penetration you need into your wood before that oil will cure and dry. So that's the reason I'm, I'm bringing the, um, the arts and craft stores in, in mind because that stuff does not have those, um, uh, those additives added to it. It is just the pure product and it's used for um, diluting oil paints and so on. Okay, it's a great oil for uh, for soaking into your wood stock inside and out. Give it a good layer, coat it up and you'll see that the wood soaks it up pretty fairly quick. It was shiny but now it looks like it's got a kind of a dull matte appearance. That wood is soaking in the oil. Keep applying it, keep applying it, keep applying it until the wood isn't really soaking it up anymore. Okay, now you're, you're at a uh, a, uh, in, in a position where the wood has essentially stabilized. You can kind of wipe off any excess, let it sit in the corner of the, of the gun room, in the lock room, or, or in, in your gun safe, and just let it sit there and cure for a little while. And then we're going to start getting into the process of applying boiled linseed oil with the dryers and so on on the outside of that to kind of act like a, 
like an impermeable layer on the outside of the rifle. A shell, if you were, um, if you will. This rifle has had nothing but pure oil applied to it, and um, so there is no boiled linseed oil treatment yet on this on this rifle. We're about to get to there. Um, however, you will see after application, after application, after application of your boiled linseed oil, and you can see this bottle here. It's kind of um, you know, there's lots of spillage on the outside. Here's another one. This here is double boiled linseed oil, which is a, a product that I would use on my on the Enfields to to. Uh, it's it's very very viscous and it, it will enter into the wood deeply and penetrate quite well. Uh, it's not a great finish a great finishing product. I would just stick with your standard boiled linseed oil for that. The stuff here, but you will see it on the. Um, on the container that it is kind of a it, it will dry kind of a yellowy orangey kind of um, look to it and that's what's going to happen to your rifle so if you have a beautiful white beechwood stock maybe you just pulled a number four mark two out of wrap and it's just a beautiful blonde um, beech wood on it it will slowly turn yellow and orange over time of continually massaging lind boiled linseed oil into the wood. It's part of the waterproofing and the conditioning of the wood. It's good for the rifle, it's good for the wood, but you will see the, the wood slowly darken over time as the uh, linseed oil oxidizes in the wood itself. And I think it, add, it adds a be beautiful character to the wood myself. And it is normal, it is uh, it's, it's the way you're supposed to do it. Um, and also how much Boiled linseed oil to apply. The British Army had, they had said, you have to do this at this time for this amount, at this kind of ratio. Uh, but essentially, you, you really can't go wrong by just getting a little bit on your hands and rubbing it into the wood until it starts to feel just a little bit tacky. Okay, then you coated it enough and it's activating. Just the warmth from your hands seems to activate it. Um, let it dry and then just continue the process over and over and over until you start to build up on the outside. You start to build up um, a nice layer of boiled linseed oil. It's impregnating into the wood, but you're also starting to get a bit of a, a, a coating on the outside of the wood as it dries. And you're developing that um, um, you, you're developing that protective outer shell to the wood with the oil itself. <clears throat> you can get to the point where uh, you can actually wet dry sandpaper the boiled linseed oil without it actually. Um, biting into the wood, so you're not actually sanding the wood, you're actually just sanding the uh, the boiled linseed oil shell on the outside of the wood. And you can get a bit of a nice little slurry going. Just a little bit of uh, boiled linseed oil, you kind of could just give it a give it a good wipe with the with a, a thousand grit sandpaper. And before you know it, in between coats, you're starting to develop a mirror type of um, finish to the rifle that you can almost see your reflection in. Now you can see the uh, kind of the reflection that you can get, the shiny kind of appearance that you can get from a uh, walnut stock that has been properly treated with boiled linseed oil. It really is beautiful when you get these stocks properly, properly treated with linseed oil. Now, this rifle isn't entirely original. You can see the two dots right here. Those are dowels, which means this is a free-floated, cinder-blocked, uh, match tuned 303. This is what the Canadian Army did to these some of these rifles and uh, this one was actually used as a regimental rifle team. Um, it's even got the uh, the sling swivel on here for, for target shooting and it is a good shooter. Um, I didn't do this to this rifle, that's how it came to me. It's a competition rifle but it's an regimentally, it's an a regimental armorer did this for their Canadian regimental shooting team. You don't see too many of these as uh, Canadian Long Branch, but you can just see the wood. You know, I've, I really do try to take care of it, right? And that's the linseed oil treatment. So, so any, anyways, uh, well, a bunch of you out there have been asking me questions about how do you maintain your rifle. Don't sand them. Um, don't use oven cleaner on them to get the grease out and try to clean the wood. Just be patient. Don't take any shortcuts, um, and just take your time. This stuff, you need to rejuvenate it, restore it slowly over time. Before you know it, you've got a, a 1950 long branch like this. It's taken years of hand rubbing boiled linseed oil into the wood. 
I've got that outer shell built up and the wood is nicely saturated with oil. It's extremely stable, it's very reliable in the bush. And you can do that with all, your, all of your military surplus firearms. They pretty much all develop the same kind of routine for maintaining. Even if it comes down to, I've got, always got a little bit of oil. This here is 15 weight 40 motor oil, right? If, you're, if your rifle's getting wet and, the, and, the, and you've, you've punched that, that nice exterior um, shell of linseed oil built up on the outside of your wood, it will wash away with rain and snow and all that different stuff. So even if it's just 15 weight 40, you know, engine oil, sure it's a bit stinky, retreat the oil. It's oil is oil is oil. It comes down to it. I mean, it's just maintaining the stability of your rifle. You don't lose your zero. What is it swelling up in moisture? Um, it's just part of the process of owning one of these firearms. That's one of the ways you maintain it. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope we're all doing well. Maybe after sending off, maybe leaf up.